we're going to get into a bit of delta, a bit of delta lake in Synapse Analytics in this video, because there's been a bit of confusion over what isn't and isn't supported when you create external tables over delta data, because we've got a couple of different database types that we're dealing with within Synapse, which is the lake database and the serverless SQL pools database. So I'm gonna come straight into Synapse workspace and I'm gonna go over to my develop tab. Now we're gonna do three scenarios, okay? The kind of, as we do these scenarios, it kind of explains why we're doing them as well to kind of compare and contrast. So I've got a Spark uh, notebook running, which I know might shock uh, a few people because I don't really tend to do much in Spark, but I've got a data frame that I've loaded with a bunch of web telemetry data and I'm writing it back out to the data, to the, uh, the data lake to an Azure Gen 2 storage account and I'm gonna partition it. So I've partitioned by year, month and date and I'm saving that to you know a container and a folder and I'm writing it out in the Delta format. So within Spark, so I'm uh, using a Spark pool, I've created a database. Now that creates a lake database. Now lake database is primarily used within Spark. You can create them within the Synapse GUI as part of the, the database designer and the database templates process. But I'm creating a database using, uh, using Spark cluster. So that's going to create a lake database. And I've created a table over that Delta data pointed it at the you know the folder where I've created it and ultimately I can select data so I'm just going to select that and then let that run for a few seconds and I'm going to get the results back right now the crux of this really is the whole partitioned aspect of delta tables and what isn't and isn't supported so when you create a Delta table within um, a Spark notebook, if I use that uh, partition column or one of the partition columns to filter, it's going to partition prune, i.e. it's only going to go and scan and select the data from the relevant folders in the data lake. So if I just go into my data lake here, if we go into that Delta folder, then there's the this is the root of the, the Delta folder. I've got my year, I've got my months, and I've got my days in there. Okay, so that's the partition scheme. Yeah. So in terms of Spark, being able to partition prune, it just optimizes. Yeah, it just optimizes performance. Why go and scan stuff that you don't need to um, if all of, you know, if 99% of your folders don't actually contain, you know, the data that your, uh, that your filter is looking for. So far, so good okay so we've been able to create some uh, create a, a delta table partitioned on three columns and we can select using one of the partition columns now i'm gonna skip to log analytics because i've enabled log analytics on the storage account um here's a query that i created earlier. I'm not too much of a, a KQL expert yet, but I'm really liking it for querying uh, querying logs. And I'm just going to run it. It does take a minute or two for the data to actually appear. It's actually appeared right now. And we can see that it's only read the folders for the 20th of February. Okay, so happy days. Okay, we know that it's only gone and touched you know that folder in the data lake as part of our query so far so good if i now jump to serverless okay so i'm gonna 
I'm going to click on the tab here for serverless. So now we've jumped out of a Spark notebook and we've jumped into a serverless SQL script where I've already created a serverless SQL pools database called SQL Delta Video. And I've created a schema and I've done the necessary security to be able to connect to that using managed identity. OK, so I'm just going to scroll past that bit here. Now, what we can do, we can create an external file format using Delta. OK, so we can create external file formats for CSV, for delimited data and for Parquet also for Delta. Now we need to create an external file format. So I'm just going to run that. We need to create an external file format if we're creating external tables, because two of the properties that an external table uh, needs to have been already created is a data source, which is the location you know, in our data lake, and the file format. OK, so I'm going to create an external table matching the schema of the data that's in the Delta table. OK, so there's my three columns that are exposed as partitioned columns in, uh, in the Delta table. And I'm going to run the same select query over that table. And it's probably going to take a few extra seconds longer to run. And I'm willing to bet we're not going to get any data back. OK, and we'll see why. So let it run for a few seconds. You'll also find out why it's taking a little bit longer to run as well. So if we wait a little bit, maybe get to 30 seconds. Is it going to bring me back no results, which is what I'm looking for? OK, 40 seconds, nothing. OK, no results. Uh, if we have a look at messages, we can see that it's actually scanned uh, 554 megabytes, about half a gig of data, and yet it's not returned anything. That's because if we do a select top 10, let me just drag this up a little bit, we actually get data. Yeah, so we've got data back. However, my three partition columns. So let me just bring the results up. So year, month and date, they're all null. It hasn't understood the partition scheme. Now, this is actually called out in the Microsoft documentation, but it's just a, you know, it's a little box of text that says, by the way, partitioned Delta tables aren't supported, but you can still create them. Yeah. You can still create them in serverless SQL pools. It's just that the partitioning scheme won't work. Dangerous because when we query it, it doesn't know how to partition prune. It doesn't know how to filter the data. So it's literally hitting all of the data, trying to find what it's looking for. And actually, if I wonder if I run this, we're going to get results back. Um, yes. So our query here, you can see that I'm now reading every single folder that's in that data lake and it's in that delta table. So not ideal. OK, so word of warning, delta tables, if they're partitioned and you create them in serverless SQL pools, you're not going to get any partitioning. OK, and it's going to go off and it's going to read and process all the data that's in your Delta table. OK, so that's that sort of call out and that scenario. And then the third scenario is essentially the support to query a Delta table using serverless SQL pools that is partitioned. But that's when the table has been created in a lake database and then what's uh, called a, a metadata sync. It's a one one way process from a lake database to a serverless SQL pools um, to the serverless SQL pool service. It doesn't duplicate the databases. It just makes the external tables available for
for serverless SQL pools to process. Okay, so you can create all your tables, all your external tables in a lake database and then query them using serverless SQL pools. So actually what I'll do is I'm going to jump to this query here and I'm going to use the exact same table from the notebook. So let's just go into the notebook quickly. So running at this select in a Spark cluster, that same database and that same external table, I'm going to query, except now I'm just going to use the serverless SQL pools service. Let me run that. And we get some results back. If we look at the messages, then I'm going to see that seven, seven meg have been scanned. Came back pretty quickly, so I'm pretty confident that it has partition pruned. So let me go into log analytics and run that and see if we've got some results back yet. Actually, let me click back into that. So it's probably going to take a bit of time to come through. I'm not going to worry too much uh, if it doesn't come through immediately, because sometimes there's a bit of lag with it coming through in log analytics. OK, so refreshed it again and we can see that the serverless SQL pools query has only touched the folder dated the 20th of February. So it's only gone and read that folder from the data lake. So you know, partition pruning has been successful. OK, so that's the kind of confusion that I've seen a little bit in terms of delta tables within Synapse Analytics is that if you create them in a lake database using Spark, then you can use you can use Spark SQL, you can use Python, read that table, filter it on a partition column, and you're going to get successful partition pruning. If you then query the same table, the same lake database, but using the serverless SQL pools engine, yes, partition pruning is going to work. It's going to understand and respect the partitioned metadata. But if you create a delta table, a partitioned delta table in serverless SQL pools itself, in a, you know, I call it a native serverless SQL pools database. But if you create an external table there, it's not going to understand the partition scheme. Yeah, you can still query the table. You're just not going to get the partition data back. And it's going to go and scan every single file, every single folder in that delta table. So in serverless, we could create a view. So for example, if I come down here and uh, create a view, so again, I can use Delta as the format for the view. If I create that view, so let's just create that view now. OK, uh, let me just change it like that. So if now we create that view, I'm just going to select this and run it. And this is all in serverless SQL pools. So now nothing to do with lake databases, nothing to do with Spark. If I query that view, so I'm just going to run that. And again, we're going to query you know, 20th of uh, 20th of February data. And we'll wait for the results back. We look at the messages and we see 7 meg. OK, so I'm not going to bring up log analytics. Suffice to say that is going to successfully partition prune and only go and scan the data that it should. So I hope it's been useful just to kind of point out a couple of the idiosyncrasies in how Delta works within well, both late databases and serverless SQL pools databases. If you've enjoyed the video, and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing because we've got some more videos on the way around Power BI and Synapse Analytics as well. But 
I'll be diving into Delta over the next few weeks and months as well. And usually I like to find some of the idiosyncrasies about what's going on. Some of the gotchas, really, uh, when you're dealing with this sort of thing. So thanks a lot. Bye-bye.